In this video, we're going to talk through the top five forgiving irons of 2023, but not necessarily my top five forgiving irons of 2023. You see, we're going to talk through the top five forgiving irons for the average golfer. I'll explain in just a second. Because you see everyone, I love being part of the YouTube community. I myself, I'm a PJ professional, so I have varied opinions on things. I like reviewing golf clubs. I love bringing you the best forgiving golf clubs potentially for you. But I also think it's important to take other people's examples into account, to take other people's opinions into account. And today we're taking into account the opinion of not only a average golfer, but well, the average golfer, you see, that is a prime example. First swing of the day, lovely turf interaction, fantastic golf shot, gorgeous ball flight. Guys, we are looking at the average golfer's top five forgiving golf clubs, and one of them is the Ping G430 irons. Now, I absolutely love these. I think they look gorgeous. I think they look so much better than the G425 irons that they preceded. I really, really like all the technology that's in them. They actually feel okay as well, which for me, for a game improvement Ping iron is Quite a good remark. You can see we've got loads of technology. We've got a tungsten weighting in the toe there to help with MOI and forgiveness. We've also got the poor flex technology at the back. That is what makes it sound just that little bit better. For me, that's what Ping have been lacking over the last few years with their game improvement ranges. They've always performed well, they've always stacked up well. A lot of the irons that I have in this bag today stack up very much over muchness with the rest of them, but it comes down to looks, it comes down to feel, it comes down to which product do you really want to spend your money on. Guys, if you've not seen the Average Golfer's channel, then go and check it out, go and check out his video on these clubs. He explains it from a slightly different point of view from me, which I think is fantastic. I love Andy's channel, I love what he does with it, he's a fantastic bloke, and aside from being a Liverpool fan, he's one of the nicest people in the YouTube game. So, they're not in any order, but G430 do make it into Andy's top five forgiving clubs. What's next? You see, after that first shot, all I kind of want to do is keep hitting this G430, and that's something which I've never had before with ping irons. And even that, which isn't a great golf swing, still nice turf interaction, still a lovely ball flight. What more do you want from a forgiving iron? Right, I'd say this is number five, but it's not. What's next on the list? So guys, if you are new to this channel, welcome. If you're not new here, you will know that I do a top five forgiving irons every year. And actually, a few of my top five forgiving irons do match up with Andy's top five as well, which I think is really interesting. Obviously, being a PGA pro, I've fitted people in the past, I've taught numerous people in the past, and I like to see exactly what people want from forgiving golf clubs. And the fact that Andy's, as an average handicapper, matches up to mine, I think pretty good. Okay, so next up on the average golfer's list of top five forgiving irons is a golf club which I think honestly could change the game of golf. I think it could transform how a lot of people play and to be honest, totally change how people perceive iron play, totally perceive how people want to play with their irons and just totally change the game, which this brand has been known to do for quite some time. This is quite obviously the TaylorMade Stealth HD irons. Now, if I say these are jam-packed full of technology, I must admit I'm not really paying them much justice because you can look at the shape of these. This 7-iron almost looks like a chipper. This is properly redefining how golf is going to be played. Yes, brands have attempted this in the past, but I don't think with as much joy. I don't think with as much... Um, style you could say obviously a lot of people will think this is the ugliest looking golf club in the world but for a lot of people they're going to think you know what all of a sudden i can play irons again you can see the different shape you can see that elongated blade length you can see the kind of really really wide sole with loads of bounce on there to help with turf interaction you can see the through slot speed pocket you can see loads of offset you can see well if i keep saying you can see then you, i mean i'll just show you exactly how it goes but i don't feel like i have to make a full golf swing here i feel like i could almost just play kind of nice half shots and just look how easy that ball is to launch in the air now the key with these is it's not just a stronger lofted iron this iron has loads of loft on it it actually has more loft than a standard stealth 7 iron that's because these irons are designed to get up in the air they are designed to launch they are designed for people who want to see that ball get up in the air through a totally different flight window than maybe you could have done in the past. I love these. I probably have these at number one for anyone who struggles with irons. And I think the fact that they actually don't feel too bad either is a real tick in the box for TaylorMade. So Andy, that's another one that you've ticked off and I totally agree with you there. Very good, sir. Now what's next? 
Guys, I'm just going to quickly say, if you are new to this channel, then welcome. If you're not new, but you enjoy the content, please make sure you do hit that subscribe button. Almost 60% of you guys who watch aren't subscribed. It really does break my heart that you're not subscribing if you enjoy these videos, just in case you miss them, being as they are every day. Right. Next in the list is a club which, again, I had in my top five, maybe for different reasons than Andy, though. So if I were to start off this segment by showing you the top line, the offset, and the gorgeous looks of this iron, you probably wouldn't believe just what iron it is when talking forgiveness. You can see that I've reviewed these quite heavily. And I've hit the middle of the face with them more often than not. And the reason why I've tested them so heavily is because I just think, to be honest, for the everyday golfer, Shrixen makes so much sense with these irons. These are, of course, the Shrixen ZX4 Mark II irons, together with mainframe technology, together with all the good stuff that makes these so forgiving. They've got an elongated blade length. They've got a really, really cool sole design here, which differs between the ZX4, ZX5, and ZX7. You can see you've got tungsten waiting in the toe there as well. Now, the big thing for me with these is the ZX4, ZX5, and ZX7 fit perfectly into a combo set. So into a set where maybe you'll have ZX4 long irons, then ZX5 mid irons, then if you want like a ZX7 pitching wedge because you want a really small pitching wedge, that can work really well for you. Now I've got the ZX4 9 iron here, and if you just want a set of forgiving irons, again, you could do a lot worse than buying or especially trying these because it looks so good down at the ball. You almost can't believe the performance these kick out. Like I've really not hit that well and that's gonna be middle of the green. This is the thing with these clubs, isn't it? Okay, front edge of the green, pretty good. But this is the thing with these forgiving golf clubs. Does it make golf easier? I think it has to do. For me, it probably makes me a little bit lazier with the golf swing. That's not a good thing, but if you're a mid to high handicap golfer, if you're an average golfer, these could be perfect for you. I love the fact that Shrixen have made these so you can integrate them into different sets. Although for the high handicapper, you could do a lot worse than just going full set of ZX4s and even on a bad shot, end up there. Now, I've been discussing in this video how a lot of my iron choices have matched Andy's, the average golfers. And I'm, I'm really, really pleased with that because it shows that we test golf clubs a lot and we find very similar outcomes when testing them. Now the next set, I haven't actually tested and I don't actually have, although it's very strange that it should be in this that I watched this morning because I was at their headquarters getting fitted for the new sets yesterday. So Andy actually likes the 0211 X-Core 2 irons from PXG. They weren't released last year, but the Gen 6 is ready to come out. I love what PXG are doing at the moment with the more budget range, with the expensive range as well for people that want them. But Andy really swears by these, and I know Andy likes the PXG brand as well. So I was really happy to get down there and test the new ones. I can't say much about them just yet, because I don't want to ruin the review, I don't want to ruin the video or the fitting session. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. And I know we're not talking about a soup here, but um, all the ingredients that are going into this for me are very, very interesting. So yeah, the PXG 0211 X-Core 2 irons, very good. They're in Andy's top five. I haven't tried them, so I can't pass judgment on them. But I know if Andy likes them, probably worth giving them a try. Now there's one iron left. Guys, which iron do you think it is? Have you watched Andy's video? Do you know what it is? What am I gonna say about it? Because I put a very similar one in, but not quite this one. Okay, the fifth and final iron in Andy's top five forgiving irons for the average golfer. Um, I haven't actually tested yet, and I'm really looking forward to getting out here and testing them. And, oh, I don't want to leave that on a windy day. Don't worry, I got it, it's going in the bag. So it's an iron which I actually did put in, but not quite this one. It is the Paradigm X iron by Callaway, and I actually put the standard Paradigm iron in for reasons which I think... I think it's a good enough iron anyway. I think it's forgiving enough anyway without the Paradigm X, the bigger one, the kind of longer blade length, more offset, stronger lofts. But then looking at these, I feel like I may have misjudged them a bit because I've hit some of them over in California when the new Paradigm range launched. And you can see loads of tungsten in the back of there that is designed to help launch the ball. For me, it just doesn't look quite as good as the standard Paradigm. I don't know what Callaway have maybe done for my opinion with this to make it not quite look as good. It's a lovely kind of clear looking blade. You can see that, or should I say face? It's obviously not a blade, is it, looking at that, but you know what I mean, club. But Andy obviously saw something in this when he tested it that I didn't see, which again, I don't mind. I'm open to people's opinions. I'm open to people saying what they think about golf clubs. These are probably just a little bit clumbersome, a tiny bit on the big side for me, even if I was gonna fit my high handicap dad or, or one of my high handicap friends. But then if it's all about performance for you and you want total ease, see how maybe 
people would start to love these. I mean, that actually felt really good. But guys, they are the best top five forgiving irons for the average golfer of 2023. I have to take my hat off to Andy. Very good, sir. I'll put it back on because I am due a haircut. But guys, thank you so much for watching. Smash that subscribe button if you enjoyed it. Throw a like if you enjoy with Andy's comments. And actually, let me know which ones you'd add. But apart from that, I'll see you all at the same time tomorrow. Goodbye.